welcome to Edison Open House Global Healthcare 2022. In this session, we're highlighting the work of Lung Life AI, a company which it won't surprise you to learn is involved in the early diagnosis of lung cancer using AI and other methods. With me to tell us more is its CEO, Paul Pagano. Paul, welcome. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to be here. So we've seen a big shift in lung cancer. It's really a disease which was a complete heart sink cancer until very recently. You know, one in barely one in 20 people survived five years, huge amount of stigma to it. Now we're seeing a lot of new targeted drugs, which are actually very effective. But, and here's the big but and where you come in, is that unless you can diagnose early, you can't give people those drugs at, in the right time uh, interval. So tell us a bit more about the issues that are involved in early detection of lung cancer. Yeah, you know, you, you bring up a great point. When I first started in the field over 10 years ago, um, there was really only one targeted therapy at the time, uh, AGFR inhibitors, but really revolutionized treatment for certain patients that had that, that particular mutation. Um, but over the last 10 years, we've been really unfolding the mutational landscape in lung cancer. Um, as you touch on, it's all focused, unfortunately, on late stage disease, because that's where the vast majority of individuals are diagnosed around 80% of them. Um, while the targeted therapies work better than what chemotherapy does, um, it's never really a cure for those individuals. Same with immunotherapy. Incredible therapies, but not a cure. The only way that you can effectively eradicate somebody's lung cancer is through early detection. Um, unfortunately, only 10 to 20% of all lung cancers are diagnosed early. Um, that's generally because lung cancer develops without symptoms. Uh, there are no nerve tissues in the lung, so you can't feel anything growing. Uh, and then there aren't any really good early detection strategies that are effective and widely utilized. And indeed, there's not a lot of screening. Uh, lots of people have suggested, you know, regular CT scans for smokers. But in most countries, those programs aren't in place. Yeah, you know, the um, CT scanners are the most effective early detection solution, but there are a lot of problems around them. Um, the, the problems really center on how sensitive it is at picking up what are called indeterminate lung nodules. These are spots on the lung, and, and as they sound, physicians aren't sure what they are. They're indeterminate. They could be lung cancer, could be a viral infection. For example, COVID can cause lung nodules, fungal infections. Uh, and the tools that are at the physician's disposal to understand what those nodules are, are really inadequate. There's the wait and see pathway, come back in three or six months, get another CT scan, see if that nodule has gotten any bigger. Great news for the patient, right? If it is getting bigger, it's a tumor. And now they have this anxiety wondering, well, do I have something growing inside me? Should I get it out? The other option is get a biopsy. And that biopsy is not without harms. It involves sticking a long needle across the chest wall, you try and get a little piece of that nodule to look at it under the microscope, make a decision that way. Uh, one in five of those returns an adverse event, and we're not talking minor, minor things, collapsed lung, hemorrhaging. Um, unfortunately, there have even been individuals that have died as a result of a lung biopsy. So there's really a need for additional information uh, in this space, and that's where lung life is focused. So we've really set you up there. Tell us where lung life comes in and what you're doing to overcome these problems. Yeah, so at Lung Life, we have developed a blood-based diagnostic test. This is called Lung LV, and it's designed to facilitate the decision-making process when a physician finds an indeterminate lung nodule. Um, there's something around one and a half million of these identified every single year in the United States. Um, and our purpose is, you know, before you go off and get an invasive biopsy or tell a patient to wait three or six months for a follow-up CT scan, get the blood test first. And we'll help the physician decide you know, yes, this is cancer, you should move on it aggressively, or no, this is unlikely to be a malignant lesion, um, you should go through more of a surveillance or wait and see pathway, avoid those potentially unnecessary procedures. By the way, around 40% of all lung nodule biopsies return a no lung cancer diagnosis. So there are quite a few um, unnecessary biopsies going on in the United States. So you have the liquid biopsy, uh, and then you have the AI. What does the AI do? 
Yeah, so the um, lung LB test is powered by a proprietary image analysis algorithm. And what this does is it helps our clinical laboratory scientists identify abnormal cells in the blood under the microscope. Now we developed this algorithm using machine learning. This is a type of artificial intelligence where basically you train a machine to look at pictures in the same way that a human would. Um, now I'm gonna use some fancy language. The type of machine learning that we use is called 3D convolutional neural networks. Basically a fancy word to say it allows us to interrogate the three-dimensional structure of a cell rather than a compressed two-dimensional picture, which is typically what you get out of a microscope. Now, our preliminary data suggests that the algorithm that we use can find more of these abnormal cells. And what that suggests is that the lung LB test might be more sensitive at finding cancers when combined with this proprietary algorithm. So why is that important? Well, clinically, it's a benefit to the patient, right? We're finding more cancers uh, just by analyzing existing data more effectively. Now, this is early diagnosis, but what will prompt people to have this kind of test earlier in their disease course? Because you're saying that there are no symptoms or, until relatively late on. Yeah, the best tools that we have right now are risk factors. Um, so these could be things, um, actually, I, I'll preface this with right now, the risk factors that are commonly used for early detection are, are fairly broad and limiting. So age and smoking history. So if you do have a significant smoking history, they say 20 or more pack years. So a pack a day for 20 years, two packs a day for 10 years, um, then you're eligible to get a lot of these early detection tests. But what we at Lung Life and many in the field understand is that there are a lot more risk factors. Um, for example, if you've had a prior cancer, a family history of cancer, if you've been exposed to environmental uh, insults such as asbestos, um, even barnyard dust, those can increase your risk for having lung cancer. And so initially it will be um, including all of those risk factors to help people understand, look, you need to take this test. Uh, lung cancer could happen to you, sort of reducing that it's going to happen to someone, uh, somebody else, not to me. Uh, and then that will help bring them in to get a CT scan, again, if a nodule is found, to get a lung LB test. Eventually, because a lot of these risk factors don't necessarily apply to everybody, uh, there's an increase in the incidence of lung cancer in never smokers, particularly in younger women, um, late 30s, early 40, 40s, that we still don't completely understand why they're developing lung cancer. Um, eventually, it's going to be getting uh, technology like ours um, to address that unmet need as well. So you've had some very exciting news recently, which is that you've been granted a PLA code. Can you explain first to an audience that's maybe not used to the American system what a PLA code is and why it's so significant to your commercialization? Yes, so it's great if you have a high-performing diagnostic test, but if you don't have reimbursement, it's really just an R&D project. And reimbursement is how you get paid for your clinical test here in the United States. Now, PLA code offers healthcare professionals a uniform language for coding medical services and procedures. And it allows CLIA certified laboratories like Lung Lives to more specifically identify in our tests when billing Medicare, that's our public insurance provider, as well as when billing private insurers. Now, we applied for our PLA code last year and I'm very pleased to report that the American Medical Association granted that code earlier this year. The PLA code itself is a critical first step and it enables us to pursue other important components of reimbursement, including pricing and coverage, and those will take place in 2022 and 2023. Now this work in lung cancer involves a very specific basket, if you like, of uh, different uh, tests uh, along with the AI. Can you adapt it for other cancers? Yeah, um, you know, so so for lung cancer, it, it's important to know that that nearly 400 people die every day in the United States from lung cancer alone. Um, the number one cancer killer kills more than breast, prostate, and colorectal combined. And so lung life is highly focused on increasing the early detection because again, if lung cancer can be detected early, survival rates dramatically increase. Um, now that said, we believe there are aspects of the test that may be suitable to other cancer types. Uh, in our pilot study, um, 
vast majority of the indeterminate lung nodules, greater than 95% of them that were cancerous, were lung cancer, and that's very typical. Um, however, we did have a few non-lung cancers that lung LB was able to detect, so um, melanoma, kidney cancer, and uh, liver cancer. Um, so there's potential for lung LB in other cancer types. Um, you know, while every individual's cancer may be unique, we believe that there are some components that are similar, and those similarities may be detectable by the lung LB test. Although I will say that the test name may need some adjustment. <laughs> And I noticed that you've got um, the white ribbon uh, symbol for uh, lung cancer behind you, because a big part of this is also breaking down the stigma so that you really get people uh, to, you know, go into clinics early and not be kind of nihilistic about they've been a smoker, so therefore they're kind of doomed. Yeah, uh, you know, the White Ribbon Project's great. It's a grassroots organization that started last year. Um, and what they're trying to do is raise awareness um, for lung cancer. Um, helping reduce some of that stigma that you talk about uh, is very important. Um, it, lung cancer is typically associated with smoking. And while that is a substantial risk, risk factor, really the only thing that you need to get lung cancer is a pair, is a pair of lungs. Um, there's an increasing incidence of young lung cancer, never smokers. Um, and we believe that early detection should be democratized for all groups, smokers and non-smokers. That's great to hear. Now, in 2022, what should investors look out for? Yeah, so our investors should look out for some key news flow um, that'll fit in certain areas, uh, reimbursement, uh, clinical operations, as well as regulatory support. Uh, on the reimbursement side, certainly they should be looking out for updates around our PLA code. Um, for clinical operations, we're writing up the results for our pilot study, uh, so they should be looking for the publication of that in the first half of the year. Um, I mentioned early detection of lung cancer is key, and so what the readers of that pilot study will find is that 75% uh, of the cancerous nodules that the lung LB test identified were stage one lung cancer. And that's at its earliest stage when cure is effectively possible, and that's opposed to around 80% that are diagnosed in stage four today. So look out for that publication. Um, as for uh, the regulatory side of things, hopefully listeners have seen that Lung Life's Clea Laboratory recently received accreditation from the College of American Pathologists. Uh, this is the world's largest organization of board certified pathologists, uh, a leading provider of laboratory accreditation services. They're recognized as having equal or more stringent uh, review than the federal government's own inspection program. Um, we're delighted by this because Having a top class quality system is a strategic initiative for us here at Lung Life. I've said this before, we're seeking FDA voluntarily. Um, we could commercialize the lung LB test through the laboratory developed test mechanism or LDT, uh, but we believe that the scientific rigor that's required to undergo an FDA study is going to be a key differentiator for the company that we would like to pursue. It sounds as though 2022 is gonna be a pivotal year for Lung Life AI. Wish you every success with it. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure.